Instagram family. Thank you so much for joining me. I have wanted to do this for a long time. Normally I answer your Q&A on Instagram stories, but last night when I asked you what questions you had for me, there were so many and so many were really great and really personal, really um, emotional that I thought I should edit them all together and make an Instagram IG so that it could live on Instagram longer. Um, so hopefully they could help more of you. I think that not enough of us talk about some of the harder things that we go through and hopefully this will help a lot of us. So let's get into it. Lily Coconut Pie asks, how do you maintain a positive outlook? Do you exercise and what works for you? It's a really good question because I do not love exercise, but I love how I feel after I exercise. What I really do to maintain a positive outlook, I listen to Deepak Chopra and Oprah's 21 day meditation. And I will show you actually, because I have it here on my phone. I have another one called Miraculous Relationships. Um, last night I listened to Hope in Uncertain Times, which is so perfect for right now. It just, between the two of them, their voices are so calming. They have such a highly evolved um, thought process. This comes from Miss Rochelle 22. Are you vegetarian? So in 2017, June 2017, my daughters asked me to watch a video on Netflix and um, ever since we watched What the Health, all three of us have been pescatarian, vegetarian when we can but always pescatarian and it is not only for health reasons, it is also for compassion, it is for the way the American um, big business industry kills animals, it is for the way the big um, business of killing animals affects the people next to those factories and how their lives and their health is affected tremendously. I had no point of reference until I saw this documentary, What the Health, um, super informative. It tried to show both sides, and I believe it did a really good job of doing that. So I highly recommend it. Again, it's not just for health reasons, it's for compassion reasons. So, great question. Okay, this question comes from a very, very long name, so we'll put it up on the screen. But the question is, I have a father that has dementia and is living with us. Our marriage is suffering. I am so sorry. That is such a very, very difficult disease. Um, okay, so this is twofold. I am Indian, or I'm half Indian, and in our culture, um, your elders come first. However, if you don't care for yourself, you will not be able to care for anybody else. And uh, your marriage is caring for yourself. So you will have to figure out a way for you and your husband to um, put one another first, if that makes sense. Make sure that there's time for you two to be as strong of a unit as you can so that you can serve your elder in a way that um, you know is needed. This is from Fazola. Dot R, and I'm hope, I hope I pronounced your name right. I have to co-parent with a narcissistic ex-husband. It just doesn't end. How do you cope? That is really tough and really sad for um, not only you, but for the children. Um, I have studied with Deepak Chopra for oh, like, I don't know, 14 years, and studying with him has definitely helped. So let's see if I can um, 
bring some of his wisdom into this answer. You want your children to benefit the most from your relationship in co-parenting, but if you get to the point where you feel that there is no communicating and the communication that you have just isn't serving them, then you have to um, set a boundary and that boundary just has to be drawn wherever you believe um, that you can forgive a narcissistic person, not because they deserve it, but because you deserve peace. And then you can stick to the boundaries that whether law enforcement sets up, whether you set them up, because you deserve to go on with your life. Okay, Kelly Dot Lee. How does one be confident when speaking in public? This is a great question. I grew up so scared of talking in public that in high school, when I had to do a speech in class, I would not show up for class that day and I was willing to take the F just to avoid talking in class in front of my classmates. That's how scared I was. And today, I honestly could care less about what people think of me. That is the journey of my life. And it was not a quick journey. It was not um, overnight, that's for sure. It probably came with a lot of pain and um, a lot of tears but you get there. You just have to believe what you're saying and you have to be humble. Believe what you're saying, care about what you're saying, and deliver it with um, compassion to people that um, first care about you. So try it to parents, try it to friends, and then if you can, take a class because classes are there to tell you how to improve. So don't skip the way that I did, because um, I used to be petrified of it. <laughs> the way I remember, actually, the first time I was thrown into it, um, our family has a tradition now of birthday speeches. So anytime it's someone's birthday, we have to say something nice about them. And so that's how I'm throwing my daughters into it. And now they don't always love it, but they know that they have to give up, um, stand up and give a short birthday speech. And so that's something that you can do with your friends and family just to kind of get used to it and have a drink while you're doing it. So it's not quite as hard. Carol underscore I mom. How do I reclaim myself after an emotionally, mentally abusive relationship? Hmm. You give yourself the respect and time that is due and not a second more, if that makes sense. So after any traumatic event in your life, it does deserve the respect of that trauma but try not to um, lick your wounds any longer than that trauma actually deserves if that makes sense and then to find yourself remind you yourself of who you really are and ways that you can do that what do you do during your time off what do you do on the weekends what do you do late night when you're um, on the couch, when you're in front of your television, when you're talking to your girlfriends? Those things are who you truly are. What do you do when you're planning a trip? What do you do when you're laying in the sun on the beach? What do you do when you're um, daydreaming? Those are all things that, that you are in your soul. Get, get back to you. Don't feel bad about taking the time that you need to get back to you, but get back to you. Should we end on a fun question? 
this is really very silly, but um, this person asks this question every single time I do a Q&A. 8 Mile underscore champ wants to know, do you think foot fetish is perverse or weird? And 8 Mile underscore champ asks me this all the time, so I think I should finally answer. <laughs> No, I don't think having a foot fetish is perverse or weird, but if you just like feet and like looking at feet, no, there's nothing wrong with that. So go at it and uh, have a good time and good on ya. So have fun. And thank you for your questions. I think they're super smart and it's really interesting to know what you guys are going through because it's what we're all going through and I will talk to you soon. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me. We're gonna have so much fun together and I can't wait to continue this journey.